Hello and welcome to the last lecture video here for chapter 12. And so <clears throat> we're going to do these quick check problems. That's where we left off in the uh, prior lecture video. So the use of profit as a performance measure may A, lead to overinvestment in assets. <clears throat> because uh, if you're not going to hold people accountable, if you're not going to hold managers accountable for how well they use those assets, they can overinvest in assets in order to generate additional profit. Right? Investment centers are often evaluated on return on investment and residual income, so the best answer is D. So let's talk about transfer pricing. Uh, transfer pricing, transfer prices are it's the price that's used to value internal transfers of goods or services. That's a transfer price. And so one of the things that we used to actually have when I worked in the uh, in the real world again was that. Uh, we had folks that would come on to our contract that would be on another contract. And so we would receive an internal bill. And so the question becomes, well, what price do we get the internal bill for? And frequently it was probably either what we were going to turn around and bill the government, you know, I mean, our standard rate, or what they typically charged on their own contract, okay? So determining that internal bill, the price of that internal bill, is similar to the idea, falls under, the, is consistent with the idea of transfer pricing, okay? So that's what we're saying over here is one division is going to sell goods or services to another division within the same company. So again, when we got that internal bill, <coughs> what price were we charged from the, if I'm on the INS contract, is from maybe the Veterans Affairs, from a de database administrator or a network administrator from the Veterans Affairs contract, that's coming over to help us out because maybe we don't have the expertise or the manpower to handle this problem. So we have to bring them on. And so what price do we get charged from the Veterans Affairs contract, which would be an internal bill. And that's when one, the Veterans Affairs contract sold services basically to the INS contract. Okay. Now you can't recognize that for external purposes. You cannot recognize that revenue for external purposes because it's not at arm's length. It's two divisions in the same company. Now, that division may be able to recognize that internally as revenue, but they cannot, as a company, recognize it external, external as revenue, only for internal purposes. So the question becomes, again, what price do we charge? You know, um, we could charge a market price, we could charge the variable cost, or we could charge the full cost plus the profit, or we could negotiate. Okay, um, so let's take a look at each one of those. The market price would be the best alternative because you could say, well, the mar if, if, there is, if the product is sold outside the firm, there's a market price that exists, that would be the best way to, to in my opinion, to set the transfer price, okay? Um, in that case, it's a good pricing me mechanism because it allows both the buying division and the selling division to be treated as independent companies. That's going to be perceived as fair because it's set by the market, supply and demand outside the, in, in the market. And so you can't really uh, quibble too much with that, in my opinion. The problem is, is what if you have some goods and services that don't have an external market value? They're only used inside that company. Okay? So you, they couldn't be sold externally. There is no market for them outside the company. In that case, the market price is the transfer price isn't a very good option. Okay? We look over here at the variable cost. We could say, in some cases, the transfer product would be meat and not sold by the uh, producing division in the open market. So there's, that's what I was saying earlier. There's no market price in this situation. So we could say maybe what we would say is the variable cost. Okay. Um, when there's no market that exists, the opportunity cost of producing the item and selling it internally would be the variable cost of producing that item. So only the variable cost. We would use that as the transfer price. One problem, though, with the, using the variable cost as a transfer price is that the selling division cannot earn a profit, okay? And so it may be unacceptable to the selling division because they're saying, well, we still have these fixed costs, and we want to be able to, you know, to set the price where we, not, where we don't just cover the variable costs, but also cover our fixed costs. So for that reason, they may be actually add a profit margin to the full cost, and then use that as the resulting. So in this case, it's going to allow them to, to cover their full cost. The selling division would cover their full cost, 
the variable cost and earn a profit. But on the other, can, other hand, the buying division may find that unacceptable. Okay. So then the, the last way would be to let the division managers to negotiate the price. Okay. We talk about the last thing we want to talk about in Chapter 12 is the balance scorecard. This is probably something you've heard about before. So the balance scorecard has a, a couple of different dimensions. It has a financial dimension, a customer dimension, internal business process, and learning and growth. And the whole idea behind the balance scorecard is that um, financial financial uh, performance measures are just one of many ways to evaluate a company. Some, sometimes. If you have a very new a company that's getting off the ground, they may be running a loss. And so does that mean they're a bad company? Not necessarily. So you might want to look at a more holistic way to evaluate a company, which is what the balance scorecard offers. Okay. The other problem with just looking at financial measures is that they tend to they are lagging indicators of performance. We're saying, here was your net income in la in the last fiscal year. That's a lagging indicator of performance, reporting what happened. But we might want to look at customer satisfaction. For example, customer satisfaction is a leading indicator of performance. So if we have good customer satisfaction, that bodes well for the future in terms of our sales growth. And so we might not just want to look at lagging indicators of performance, but also some non-financial leading indicators of performance as well. And that's another uh, advantage of using the balance scorecard. Okay, so I look over here at an example of using the balance scorecard again. I mentioned we have the customer perspective, we have the financial perspective, and so some examples under the financial perspective we could say uh, return on investment, we could say net operating profit, we could say residual income, for example. Um, we could, if it's just a cost center, we could say uh, we're going to compare uh, your cost to uh, the budget cost. If it's a profit center, we could compare your net income. To your budgeted net income, compare your net in, your actual net income to prior year's net income. We could look at cash flow on operations, cash flow from operations as a percentage of average total assets. So there's a lot of different financial uh, measures that you could look at in terms of the financial perspective. Uh, the customer perspective again is that next area of uh, the balance scorecard. The first one is the financial perspective. Then we move into the customer perspective. And so some example performance measures and, and what the customer perspective is trying to get at is how well are we satisfying the customers. And so some of these performance measures also kind of look at that. We could say um, number of customer complaints. We could look at customer satisfaction, okay? number of new customers. And so this is the listing the desire to change. You want the number of complaints to go down, obviously. You want customer satisfaction to go up, obviously. The next one would be our internal business process perspective. How efficient are our internal business processes? So we can look at some examples here. These tend to be a little bit more you know, manufacturing uh, context, but we can look at setup time, uh, time to settle customer claim. Uh, we could also look at, uh, let's see, uh, defect-free units as a percentage of completion of units. Okay, and then Delivery cycle time, quality costs. Those would be all good examples, especially in a you know, manufacturing context right over here, of uh, the internal business process perspective. How efficient do we do things inside the company? And then the last perspective, and I'm really glad to see that this one is, is listed <coughs> in the um, balance scorecard is the learning and growth, because it's just it's just my opinion. I'm editorializing here, but sometimes Companies don't um, put enough emphasis on, on keeping their employees happy, basically, and in investing in the employees. I've seen that happen, uh, where companies kind of cut back there, and I think that's myopic. That's not a good strategy for the long term. I, have, I think you have to take care of your employees and invest in your employees, and so that's my editorializing here for the balance scorecard. But, anyways, again, I'm happy to see our learning and growth perspective in there. And so this basically gets to how um, how well trained and how happy are our employees. We can look at suggestions for employee, employee turnover. Obviously, we want that to go down. And then um, hours of training for our employees with the thought that 
the better trained that they are, they can they can do things. And if they're salespeople, they might actually have better customer satisfaction from their clients. And if we're training folks inside the organization, we could have better um, measures here in terms of our internal business process. Okay. So again, that's the balance scorecard in a nutshell. Um, that's the last topic I wanted to cover in chapter uh, 12, and so here ends the uh, chapter 12 lecture video. Thank you so much.